I just wanted to show you that the carpenter did finally come and now the door swings out into the hallway instead of into the train room. Oh, welcome to my train room. Come on in. I'll bet you're wondering how I got to be on both sides of the door at the same time. It's video magic. The carpenter came to my house this week. Thanks to him, the door to my train room now swings out into the hallway instead of into my train room. Now I can begin to make the first of the big track plan changes that I've been telling you about. Hi, I'm Roy Smith. Today I'm going to show you what I've done so far with those big track plan changes. And it starts right now. Just a few days ago, the door opened into the train room like this. I wanted to connect tracks at the Eastern Helix with tracks over here at the Pocatello staging yard, but I couldn't because the door was in the way. But now I have all of this space for my layout. Let me show you what I've started to do with all of this space. Let's begin by taking a look at the track plan. I'm starting to work on bridging the gap between the Eastern Helix and Pocatello staging, shown here in the blue box. Specifically, I've modified the track plan in this corner. The current track configuration is shown here in red. I had to modify the previous version of the track plan just slightly because in the previous version, I forgot to include a section of transition track here. The transition track must go between the super elevated curves and the regular track. I gotta tell you, it wasn't easy to get the tracks to line up at both ends of this track plan change where you see the blue circles. I guess that's just how it is when using sectional track rather than flex track. With sectional track, like the Cato unit track I use, you have to keep working at it and working at it on the track plan until the tracks line up at both ends. I use Rail Modeler for Mac to draw up my track plans, and I had to keep trying different radii of curves and lengths of straight track. Finally, I got the ends of the track to line up, and I'm happy with the way it turned out on paper. Don't worry about those small gaps that you see in the circle at the bottom. Cato makes a really nice assortment of short track pieces that will fill those gaps. I want to tell you about a suggestion for my track plan that Union Pacific Sherman Hill in N-Scale sent to me this week. His suggestion is depicted by the green line. As he said, adding the track indicated by the green line would enable me to run two trains at the same time on the upper level of the layout, with no need for either of them to descend the helices. I really, really liked his suggestion, and I tried my best to incorporate it into my track plan. But in the end, I couldn't do it because of the geometry of Cato Unitrack, including Cato's lack of curved turnouts. But I haven't given up on this totally because I really like it, and I would like to incorporate it, or something like it, into my track plan. UP Sherman Hill, I really appreciate your suggestion. Thanks so much. Here's the second challenge that I haven't totally resolved. When bridging the entrance to a room, you normally can build a lift up, drop down, swing, or lift out bridge that just goes straight across the door. But as you can see here, my bridge will have to be on some kind of a curve because the entrance to the room is in the corner. So I still don't know exactly what kind of construction I will use here, but I am proceeding full steam ahead in this area of my layout in anticipation that a solution will come to me. Okay, I, I have the track plan on paper, but I still haven't started cutting the plywood. Not, not just yet. Since the track configuration has an odd shape, and has to fit into a corner, I decided to make a template to use for cutting the plywood. What I've done is a little unorthodox to say the least. 
I decided to make the template out of white styrofoam. Let me show you. I began by temporarily clamping these two strips of wood to the existing benchwork. As you will see in a moment, the two strips of wood will hold a sheet of styrofoam in place as I create the template. If this doesn't work, what have I lost? Not much. A sheet of styrofoam like this costs only about a dollar. I've put the sheet of styrofoam in place. Actually, it's a sheet and a half. I laid the track on top of it, and I marked along the edges of the track with a sharpie. I've taken off the track so you can see what I mean. Now that I know where the track will go, I will be cutting away most of the styrofoam, including the styrofoam on this side of the first track and beyond the second track as well. Then I will be left with a template that I will use to mark and cut the plywood. And once I've marked and cut the plywood, I can throw the styrofoam template away. And here I put the track back on. Again, as I said, most of the styrofoam will be cut away. Over here at the Eastern Helix, I've laid the new track on top of the existing track that must be removed. As I laid the track, I found that I couldn't follow the track plan exactly. I had to make some substitutions of curves and straight lengths. That's why I say that a track plan is just a guide. It's often necessary to deviate from the plan when laying the actual track. By the way, I already have all of the track on hand that I need for this area of my layout. But I will need to order more of it when I continue to make other big track plan changes which I described in previous videos. What comes next? Well, cutting the plywood, I guess. As for the supporting bench work, I'm not sure what kind of bridge I will install. For now, I may just install a simple duck under or lift out, but eventually I want to build something that allows for quick and easy access to the train room. If you have any suggestions, please share them with me in the comments down below. In any case, I'm ready to begin the actual benchwork construction. And with any luck, you will soon see trains running across the space where I'm now standing. Bear with me though, because I'm the world's slowest model railroader. I want to encourage you to subscribe to this channel if you're here for the first time, uh, and hit that little bell icon so that you don't miss any of the upcoming episodes. Remember, I try to publish two videos each week. Each of the two has a different purpose. On Tuesday nights, I publish a weekly show called Dispatch. In Dispatch, I try to interact with you, and that interaction with other model railroaders is one of the best things about the hobby. And my Saturday morning videos are layout updates in which I show you how I am building and operating my layout. Well, thanks for watching today. I encourage you to share this video on your social media and leave your comments down below. Until next time, happy railroading. I'm Roy Smith and I will see you again very soon.